Justin Welsh, man. Thanks for joining us today. How we how we living today? We're doing well. We're doing well. Thanks for having me on, Jake. Uh, excited to be here and uh, excited to chat with you, man. So all, all is good in my world. Yeah, man. Well, as a way of getting started, uh, for those that don't know Justin Welsh, they're probably not on LinkedIn. Let them know who you are, brother. <laughs> Sure. Um, my name is Justin Welsh, and I've been in sales for about 16 years. Uh, the last five of it is where folks probably know me the most from. Uh, I was the SVP of a company called Patient Pop. But you know, my story is I got into sales at 21. By the time I was 28, uh, I had been basically fired three times. I had never been real successful. I don't think I'd ever hit a quota. Uh, maybe even never even made a sale. It was pretty pretty pathetic start to my sales career. Um, but around 28, I got in, involved in a, as a sub-10 employee at a company in New York City called ZocDoc. And for some reason, uh, you know, the energy of the city, the people on that team, the how good the product was, and like maybe my own maturity, I think just sort of intersected all at the same time. And was really successful there, was, was there almost five years in various leadership roles. And then, you know, the last five years, I was hired as a sub-10 employee as the VP of sales at Patient Pop. I uh, took the company from zero to uh, over 50 million in recurring revenue. Um, and that's what I think most folks know me from now. And um, for the last eight months, uh, I've been working as an advisor at a high growth SMB SaaS companies. Oh, nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they also put out some really nice content. I mean, you're always putting out nice content. Uh, and you actually helped me with uh, my LinkedIn personally through your LinkedIn yeah. sales playbook, uh, which Thanks, was man. phenomenal, man. So I appreciate you putting out good content. You're definitely uh, making the content makers' lives easier. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. You know, I over the past, you know, 10 years or so, I've learned a lot. And I feel like, you know, there's an obligation to uh, give back to the community, uh, to create things that are helpful. Um, you know, to educate as often as possible. And I'm, I'm a big karma guy. So I feel like, uh, you know, whatever I do now will, will uh, you know, pay dividends in the future and, and be, be helpful in my career. So, you know, I like to put out good stuff and I'm glad that people enjoy it. Yeah, man. And so let's talk about you, though. Uh, what are you most excited about right now? What's going on? Yeah, I think the thing I'm, I'm most excited about is... Um, well, there's a couple of things I think that, that, that are top of mind for me. One is um, the work from home movement, right? I think that, um, you know, there's situations where we wish we could get out of our homes or situations where we wish we could work from our homes more often. Right. Um, but for me, but for me as, a, as an advisor, uh, I've been working from home for the last eight months. My wife is a consultant as well. And it's been really interesting to just learn what happens when you get two hours of your day back. Now, I, I'm here in, in Los Angeles. Um, so getting to my old office in Santa Monica was an hour commute each way. And when you give me two hours of my day back across five work days, you know, I'm getting 10 hours a week back. And it's yeah. been really interesting, not just, not just like what kind of projects I can create or how I can focus my business, but also the time I get to spend with my wife time I get to spend with my dogs, you know, the time I get to spend exercising, like those are things that I, I got to miss um, when I had, uh, uh, you know, a, a job where I went to the office. And I think the second thing that's really interesting to me and really, I'm really excited about is the no code movement. Um, I don't know how to code and I, I am not talented in that way. And I think people who know how to code are really amazing. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of really neat no code tools that are allowing folks like me who have a sales background or a marketing background to start creating things that I believe in. And so as those tools change and evolve, um, it gets me really excited because it allow it, it unlocks some things that I, I haven't been able to do without paying someone you know <laughs> a lot of a lot of money. At least I can do V one now, and like if it, if people like it, like I can go get an engineer. But I, I, that that really excites me as well. Oh wow, yeah. So uh, so w what might be on the horizon? It might be bootstrapping something. Sounds like <laughs> you know I I'm always kind of kicking around some ideas. Right now I'm I'm trying to stay focused. I think yeah. um, you know when I left Patient Pop eight months ago. Uh, I had a lot of ideas. I had set myself up in a good position to be a successful advisor and consultant. I'm pretty well decently plugged in in the Los Angeles area through a few VC firms. And so when that happened, I knew that I would be okay. Um, but I think what I'm trying to figure out is how do I multiply what I do? Because as an advisor or consultant, you're very time-based. So you can work with, you know, maybe four or five companies at the most at one time. And I would love to be able to create something where my learnings could be replicated and shared at a higher velocity. And it wasn't based on the amount of time I had in my day. So I'm just kind of kicking some ideas around in my head to figure out how to, how to go from being time-based to how to go from being maybe more 
um, you know, folks can get access without me having to be there live. So thinking through some ideas, but haven't, haven't landed on anything yet. <laughs> yeah, I got you. So, uh, so the, uh, work from home movement, it's, uh, now, obviously now's the time to really get into that. It's been yeah. time to get into that and really embrace yep. that. And, um, now companies, you know, um, that might need some help with that. Um, you know, how, how do people go about, you know, transitioning, mm -hmm. you know, um, so let's talk, let's dive into that a little bit, like the work from home, like you transitioned about eight months ago, sounds like, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, what was that transition like for you? And, yeah. You know, cause to me, like I have a wife and two kids, I got a three-year-old that's all about daddy. So, so I've been in podcast interviews where she's busted up in here and, and jumped all over me. And I'm like, well, it's, you know, this is what it is. You know, it's like, this, this is, this is the real life of working from home. And I saw Jimmy Fallon, uh, his daughter, in the middle of an interview yesterday, his daughter was jumping on the, his back and stuff. And I know you said you had dogs and stuff. So, I mean, talk to me a little bit that, like, the real, what that was like transitioning and how long did it take you to transition? Yeah, I, I think the, the first really interesting learning I had from moving from an office-based culture to working from home is what I call unlearning your work cadence. So I made this assumption, which was wrong, that um, you know, I would go from working you know, 80 hour work weeks at my last business. And when I got home, you know, maybe I just work a quarter of that or a half yeah. of that. And it would be really, really easy to make that transition. But when you have a cadence and when you have an amount of time that you work over a long or extended period of time, it's really yeah. hard to, un uh, to unlearn that. And yeah. so, um, I found myself at home working 80 hours a week and plugging my calendar unnecessarily. And so I think the first thing that I would recommend is people start like time boxing their efforts, right? Which is like on Sunday, really, really thinking through their priorities, what they want to get accomplished, and then boxing out some time in the upcoming week where they're going to work on those things, but that they don't get outside of that time box, right? So maybe 10 a.m. to, tw to noon, right. I'm going to work on a new presentation. And it's like, hey, don't keep going and work on it till 8 p.m., like time box it and then move on to another thing, whether uh, that's exercise, whether that's spending some time with your family. I think building in some personal blocks uh, all the time throughout the course yeah. of your day uh, is is really, really helpful for me. Um, I think another thing that uh, was helpful for me was um, networking uh, virtually. virtually. So I belong... Yeah, I belong to a group of, of revenue operators called the Revenue Collective. Uh, it's 2,000 yeah. of the globe's top revenue operators. And we got a Slack channel. And when you're working from home, it, there is nothing more valuable than being able to work with peers, work with folks in different uh, businesses, different industries, but who are, who are also managing large teams and like bounce ideas, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of getting all this internal stuff from your team, it's like going external has been super helpful. So I recommend things like Modern Sales Pros, AAISP, Revenue Collective. Those are all places where I would, would invest time. Yeah. I, I, I think from, from a team perspective, like for folks going from an office-based culture to that now suddenly they're managing teams, Unfortunately, the companies that don't have strong process and structure in place are going to suffer. Those who have installed strong process and structure already will likely make the transition a bit easier. So I was just chatting with a gentleman um, on the Revenue Collective Slack channel. My takeaway is like, make things very concrete. Every Monday, provide the what we're doing, the why we're doing it, and the how we're doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure that if your team is working from home, they're not just connecting with you manager to rep. You're also connecting peer to peer. Those should be scheduled, managed. And on Fridays, I like to have those little peer to peer teams report back to their boss or report back to me on what's going well. So it's just a holistic connection, right? And um, I think by making sure that manager to manager, rep to rep, and then manager to rep are connected, to me, I've seen just better process, better communication uh, that way. So that's just a few short tips I have, um, you know, that I've seen in eight months. Yeah. Um, and those tips also sound like some really good core values too, as well. Um, with, with like the Slack uh, accountability, you know, just mm -hmm. having somebody there to bounce ideas off of and maybe like, Hey, today, Justin, man, I just wasn't feeling it. I feel like I'm in a funk, you know? Um, so, so if, if I'm in a funk trying to transition and, you know, like, you know, some people work from home, they treat it like a, a luxury instead of actual yeah, work. Sure. 
Sure. So, and oftentimes, I mean, there's got to be a balance where, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can spend so much time of your day in your PJs. I saw our good friend, uh, Scott Lee had posted, you know, uh, you know, sometimes I, I might not even have a shower at four o'clock cause I hopped on the call at eight o'clock. Yeah. You know? I, I don't yeah. know that there's any like right way of doing it. The ultimate, I think the ultimate thing to look for is that the results are there. Yeah. 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 I think, I think being proactive, proactively communicating when you're working from home is really helpful. Like m my tip is like, um, I act like it's a normal work day. Like I'm reporting to an office, right? I yeah. get up, my wife and I go for a three mile walk at 7.30 AM. That's what we do every day. We did that when I was working at patient pop. Um, so we spend 7.30 to basically 8.20 you know, going for a walk. Now, not everyone has that luxury and that's totally cool. Maybe you do it later in the day, maybe you do it in the evening, but that's when we do it. Yeah. Um, you know, we shower up and get ready to work and I have my office. So I have a, a, a place where I work. I don't right. work all over the house. I work in one place. So that's, um, that's really helpful to me. And then, you know, I like to see that teams are proactive. So if I'm a sales rep and I'm, you know, in a funk and I'm at home by myself, that's mm -hmm. hard. And so maybe I just had a call with a customer and it didn't go so well. well. That's where a tool like Gong or like Chorus or one of those uh, tools comes in handy. And, you know, I'm, I'm inviting my manager or, or, you know, if I'm a rep, I'm inviting, yeah. you know, a peer of mine who I respect greatly to say, hey, I just had this kind of bad call. And you know what? I'd love it if you might take 20 minutes and score this thing for me and give me your feedback. Because to me, the knowledge sharing and the knowledge transferring is, is what can drop off remotely if you don't manage it efficiently and so uh, tools like gong and, and chorus connecting those to slack you know troops all these different tools that allow us to work from home really effectively i think being proactive getting in the getting in the zone and then using tools effectively is really helpful right yeah and uh let's dive into like um i'm a gong ambassador i believe in that product as well Me too. Course that I, i've used that product as well um in my last role at a tech company uh on the sales side so you know that that that's a really good product if you use it right and effectively mm -hmm. sure. um and then it can also be a product that could be abused too um in a way of which uh you're not being proactive and listening yep. to calls like right then and there it's more of a reactive tool that you listen mm -hmm. to calls post call um but you know for those that are listening that that not really we not really dive too much into it on this podcast you know how might you go about um you know structuring it where it's use uh, case is very effective. Yeah, yeah, um, totally. So I'm a big gong ambassador myself. Yeah. Um, and I think the way that we did it was we just made it structured, right? It, there was, there was a, a certain time each day where a rep would score their own call that was mandatory. It just expected. It wasn't like, Hey, I'm feeling like scoring a gong call today. Right. A certain yeah. time a rep, uh, scores one of their calls, right? And I don't think it was every day. I don't recall exactly, but maybe it was three times a week. And I think twice a week, reps scored other reps calls. So their peers calls, they were, they were partnered up. And then once a week, a manager scored one of their calls. So we had, again, sort of this, this holistic overview of someone's call. And it's really neat because, you know, when, you, when someone scores their own call, they're, they know what they're looking for. They know what they, they get off the call and they're like, oh, I know I was great at this and I know I screwed this up, right? So yeah. that's easy. But their peers are going to see something different from the frontline view, right? Oh, that's not how I prospect. Oh, that's not how I would have handled that objection. Oh, that's not how I would have talked to that particular decision maker. Exactly. Whereas the manager sometimes comes from maybe just slightly above where it says like, um, that's not the methodology that I would, would have used. You know, you forgot to include something like discovery or an upfront contract. So the manager's looking more on the sort of the 30,000 foot view. And I think when you get, I'm looking at myself, someone else in my role is looking at it. And then my manager is looking at it as an overarching view to me that you just get a really clear picture of what went well and what went poorly. And that, that to me ties into something that we call like skill review. Right. And so I think it's really crucial when you work from home to start understanding, Hey, as I go through all these gong calls and I'm the manager, what are the skills where people are really struggling? Right. And when we find a skill that we want to start getting better at, let's put that at the forefront of the week. Hey, everyone, this is a skill we're going to work on this week. I'm going to partner you all up 
Uh, on Wednesdays, you're going to meet to talk about how that skill is going. And on Friday, you're going to meet with a one slide presentation in five minutes. You're going to share with us as a group what you learned about the skill. I stole that right from Winning by Design, which is Jaco Vandercouge's uh, company. That's how they me uh, measure and manage their working from home process. And so if you don't know about Winning by Design, I recommend that your, your listeners check it out. It's a great, great, yeah. real technical scientific sales, sales consulting firm. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that's a, a resource. We'll definitely drop yeah. that in the show notes, man. Good looking up. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I love, I love, I actually uh, got one of his books right here. I mean, I always have this thing. I, <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not incentivized to do that. I just, I'm a fan right. and, and You're I, a practitioner. Uh, I'm a practitioner. <laughs> I think he's really good. So yeah, that's, those are my, those are sort of my, my tips. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I can tell by looking at your background, man, you like to read um, and you got a really cool chic thing going on back there I Thanks, can tell you, your wife she put our uh, touches in there <laughs> she, <laughs> sure. did. she certainly did yeah, uh, yeah. props to the wifey <laughs> thanks man thanks i'm reading yeah. some some really good books uh i just finished a book called building a story brand by yeah. donald miller and it's a book on telling stories oh i, and love I think it. i yeah. think it's Do it's donald miller building a story brand and i think any good salesperson should know how to tell absolutely. a story absolutely yeah man As some of the greatest speakers and the greatest influencers a live present or whatever i mean from from jesus to like eric thomas to like all these great speakers that can really move you by what they say and make you feel like you could run through a brick wall mm -hmm. you know that's that's where emotional base selling man uh is from the stories like that you can share that you can tell you know how you help somebody um, through the difficult time and transition and then sharing that with somebody that is kind of going through that same emotional state and helping them understand that you might be able to impact them, you know, mm -hmm. by telling a story. How do you, yeah. how do you use storytelling? Yeah, I use storytelling in nearly every aspect of my professional career. Yeah. So um, I come from SMB SaaS, so very high velocity sales. Uh, you know, the average contract at the last few businesses that I've worked with, um, or excuse me, worked for, um, was between 5k and 15k. So you're talking about a purchase that gets made relatively quickly. And usually our sales cycles were less than two weeks. And in my opinion, in order to get people to move very quickly, they have to become the hero in their story. And you have to put them in a place where they can be a hero and you got to guide them through the story and let them know what they look like at the end after purchasing your product. And people, ha people have to be able to envision that. Right. And I think if they can't envision that, then it becomes really hard to sell. And that's that's where storytelling comes in for me when I was on the front lines doing sales back in the day. And when I was managing a team, it's a lot like being a coach. Right. I think, um, you know, if you like I don't know if you used to play like Madden football or whatever, but you should be able to boot that up and choose what kind of coach you were going to be. Were you going to be Bill Walsh with the X's and O's or were you going to be like Pete Carroll, who's just more motivating, right? Yeah. And for me, I, I always felt like I had the X's and O's down pretty well uh, for building process, building teams. And I wanted to make sure that I also had the emotional and the inspirational side. So telling stories at the team level is to inspire, to motivate, to get people excited, to remind people why they, they come to work. Yeah. And then as I move up, move up into the executive yeah. level, I think the last area that I use stories is, you know, I talk to a lot of board members, VCs, fundraising, like you want to get them excited, excited about your product, excited about your business, excited about your team. So storytelling is just natural human stuff that I think people should, should learn to do well because it has significant career benefits. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and empowerment is a beautiful thing. Storytelling mm -hmm. helps to empower one another to and eat, like great leaders or culture builders. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything Absolutely. rises and falls on leadership for sure. Yeah. And I think when culture goes poorly, it's generally because you didn't communicate well and telling stories is part of communication right. and they're, they're sort of tied hand in hand. Um, if you don't communicate, then you don't get a chance to involve folks in your story. And if you don't tell stories when you communicate, then you don't, you don't inspire your, your team. You don't get your team bought in. Those two things are both really important. So I guess that's how I think about it. Yeah, I know. I love it. Um, so, so what else do you have going on in the world of Justin Welsh? Yeah, I think right now, um, you know, I'm sitting down to, to get some of my thoughts onto paper and, um, you know, I would like to have a book um, uh, completed sometime in the next 12 months. It's been something that I've been 
um, really thinking through a lot. And uh, I have some free time right now, you know, as right, yeah. a, a exactly. lot of us do with what's going on. And, uh, you know, so I'm going to dump my thoughts on the paper. I think that's one thing that's really helpful because I like to write. Um, so that's, that's something that I'm, I'm working on. Outside of that, I'm advising some really special companies right now. Um, you know, with, with what's going on in the world, I'm advising a company that's helping connect patients with physicians to communicate more f- f- efficiently and effectively. Yeah. So, you know, text, be- text messaging your doctor, chat botting with your doctor. And like right now, those things are important. People are yeah. scared. They need, to, they need to connect with folks. And so d- yeah. doing a deep dive into that business to make sure that it's just humming and, and flying. I love, I love spending my time doing that. Outside of that, you know, what's really new for me is, is um, trying, to, trying to grow my network trying to meet other smart people, trying to connect with folks that I've admired um, or have really thought did a great job in their, in their roles and, you know, grab a coffee on zoom, grab a beer on zoom and just get to know one another. I think connection right now is just really, really important both in the time and both in where I'm at in my career. So those are some things that, that I'm working on at the, at the moment. Yeah, no, I love it. Um, And I, and I saw you guys were putting together something yesterday. I I had to miss it. How, How did that go? Yeah, like a virtual thing. Great, man. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Um, you know, Scott Lease, who you mentioned earlier, is a six-time you know VP of sales. I'm yeah. a, I'm a, I've only been a VP of sales once, um, and he and I have very different thoughts. We're very different dudes, um, mm-hmm. and it kind of makes for a good like combo when we're chatting. So, um, in in the spirit of community, in the spirit of giving back, of connectedness, mm-hmm. last night we put on a um, a virtual happy hour where we just made yeah. the link open and anyone could attend, and we had between eighty to hundred people at all wow. times over That's ninety awesome. minutes. Yeah, we just we had a few beers, man, and we <laughs> at, we we unmuted a few folks and asked them to ask some questions, and we just riffed. We just kind of. I gave my viewpoint. Scotty gave his. We sometimes we agreed. Sometimes we were different, but. Um, you know, my goal was just to give back. And so we're going to try and do that every Thursday. We don't have a name for it. We haven't thought it through very well. Uh, we don't really know what we're doing, but, but the response was really, really sh- strongly positive. So, you know, we're going to run with that and kind of, we're both executors. So we, we probably just put our feet in front of another before we're really even thinking about it. So hopefully yeah. it goes well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, one of the things that I've seen become very popular is, uh, people were buying up domains with uh, Zoom in it. So you, yeah. whatever you name it, you name it and then add Zoom to it, then people can find you without having to do that whole join, that whole join us, the meeting code and all that yeah. on Zoom. And, yeah, so that way you would, uh, yeah, every Thursday people could just know that they got to log into uh, whatever you call it, zoom.com. <laughs> yeah, Scott, Scott uh, and I were, were texting about it last night and I'm, I like to tinker with websites and domain names and landing pages and stuff. Yeah. So he, he doesn't so much. So he's probably going to leave that to me. And maybe this weekend I'm going to, you know, prop up a landing page. And because we want people to join. We don't want to charge money for it. It's free. We, we do, we're not trying to make a living off, off this thing. We're just trying to connect the sales community. And, you know, the feedback has been really overwhelming when, when we just offer some time and some knowledge. And I think Scott and I are both pretty honest about the fact that, we know some stuff and we've had some good experience in our careers and we've been successful, but we certainly don't know everything. And so <laughs> it's great to, it's great to have everybody on board and like sharing opinions and disagreeing. I love that. Sure. I, yeah. I certainly don't know it all. And I love to be educated by other folks who are smarter than me in, in many ways. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and I, and I follow you guys content on LinkedIn, both of you always very professionally. If you don't agree with something, you know, you always say, you know, I don't agree. And we don't always have to agree with one another. And, sure. you know, that same thing with from individual contributor to a leader. Um, you don't always have to agree with your leader. They don't always know everything either. Um, but, you know, just coming down to this matter of a humility and that we're all in, on this together, um, you know, um, and, I, and I love it because um, I say connection is currency. But first, you got to connect with yourself before you can connect with anybody else. Because if you board a plane, they're going to tell you, put your oxygen mask on first. Yep. Yeah, totally, man. I, I'm, I agree with you. I think you got to be really confident and comfortable with who you are. Um, yeah. Scott and I were chatting about this a little last night. He's, he's a super comfortable dude with who he is. You know, he's a little, you know, and he, he would agree with me. He's a little more of a loose cannon. I'm a little more conservative in my, in my attitude and in the way that I am on camera and things like that. And, yeah. and so I think we make a good team, but I'm, you know, I'm 
uh, I think once you're really comfortable with, with yourself, you can say, you know yeah. what? I don't know everything and I don't always have to be right. And I don't get offended when someone thinks I'm wrong. And it just yeah. makes for good dialogue, dialect and dialogue, not dialect. It makes for good dialogue and, um, mm. you know, allows us to grow. So that's, that's the, the, the take I have on it. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, so, uh, before we wrap up, you know, where, where can people find you? I know LinkedIn, I'm going to drop that in the show notes. Um, sure. and where else can people find you? Yeah, there's there's two places that people can go to to really find me. One is my website, which is the official justin.com. It's the official justin.com. And then they can find me on Twitter, uh, which is Justin Sass. That's Justin S A A S, uh, where I tweet pretty regularly and uh you know, kind of similar to what I do on LinkedIn. Awesome. Yeah, and then uh definitely uh let us know what you decide to uh, call this uh <laughs> the Zoom room and uh definitely looking forward to participating, man. You're doing a great job for the sales community. Appreciate everything you're doing. It's better because of you, brother. Thank you, man. I appreciate you having me on the the show and and uh the good conversation. So you keep doing your thing as well and giving back yeah. to the community and we'll all grow together. I like it. Absolutely, man. Appreciate you. Cool.